soon as you was questioning if we can outdo and top Fast Five, I welcome y'all to the set. Fast Six. Fix your face. So when I did Fast Five, I thought that would probably be one of the biggest films that I would do in my career. To make it all connect and to be here now at the sixth one, it's a trip. It's a whole different level. With each success, you're left with this feeling, can we take this any bigger? Damn. Fast Five got a lot of people excited, but this is even bigger. More wild, more fast. Damn. The cynical view is that, oh, you guys are successful. It made a lot of money, so of course you're going to make another one. And I, I wanted to make sure that we didn't come back for that reason. Because I wanted to make sure that we're going to go on another journey, that it was going to push it and take it to the next level. We have been promising going to Europe for quite some time. This is London, baby. There was actually a debate on whether we would go to Europe in five instead of Rio. But because we were planning for the trilogy, we knew that we could go to Europe in the sixth one. And that's exactly what we did. Welcome to London. Yeah, I love it. It's beautiful, man. I was going to bring my bathing suit. Yes. <laughs> We've always had difficulties because of the ambition of the films. And London, it's one of the biggest cities in the world and it's not known to really facilitate big action sequences closing down streets so it's really the scale of not only the action but shooting through the Olympics shooting through the Queen the Jubilee there was plenty of times we were very very nervous along the way like how are we gonna actually accomplish this we had to have uh, two of our heroes uh, racing through the streets there's obviously hundreds and hundreds of people that we couldn't get rid of. And all we could do was back them away from the sidewalk five feet because we had these cars at high speeds racing. There was no room for error. And it wasn't easy. We had to really go in there, you know, respect where we were at and I convinced them why it was valuable for us to be able to go into these locations and, and really get to explore it practically. But you get into the higher ups in the city saying we need these for this reason and they go, you're gonna do what in our town with a tank? And then it usually comes back, no, you're not using this location. I actually had designed the tank sequence to be going through uh, London. I mean, we were gonna build a city block of London in a back lot. But when we went on the scout in Tenerife and Gran Canaria, uh, they took us to some of the highways. And I remember thinking, wait, these highways aren't operational at all. So I thought, oh, this is better than London because it's not artificial. It's everything we do is gonna be practical. And to have a government that was that open to say, hey, yeah, come over and uh, we have these brand new highways you can wreck. Uh, it, <laughs> It made all the difference. Yeah, what's involved in driving this, this tank then, mate? It's a lot of hard work. <laughs> I think what's gonna separate Fast 6 from Fast 5 is really upping the ante when it comes to the action. Fast 6, Justin wanted to go big on everything, every level. When people wanted to try to back it down, Justin would just push it forward. I just felt like, on this one, we go big or we go home. Looking back, Fast Five serves a great launching pad for the action sequences that come in Fast Six. I think Justin did an outstanding job of building off of that platform that he laid there. The one thing that I've learned about the crew that I work with is that nothing is impossible. I find Justin incredible in the fact that he has to design things in his head that we don't even think about. And we can have the car come in. Yeah. But he's also able to think in minute detail about the narrative and the characters. That's what separates him from other action directors. He cares about the story as much as he cares about the action. The last one was great float out, but I'm just saying let's, let's take a little bit more time. Got it. In this one, Justin really was like, you know what, I want to give everyone an opportunity to do some cool stuff. Thank you.
In Fest 4 and Fest 5, I didn't get to do much action, and I always told Justin, Justin, listen, I want to be a badass. I want to do it all. And when we had the conversation before this one, he was like, okay, gal, you're going to have a lot of action in this one, so get ready. <laughs> Justin has always been incredibly good with what made character special. Yeah! So there is a tremendous amount of goodwill for these characters. Yeah! We're all just so blessed to be a part of this because it just gets, it keeps getting more and more fun. We already have that rapport, you know, off camera. Yeah. So it was nice to explore that and be able to share our relationship in front of the camera. Live on set. <laughs> I think that's why people relate to these guys because everyone feels that. I love action, don't get me wrong, but at the end of the day, what is it that you're rooting for? We want you to root for Dom and Brian. There's so much equity in the Dom-Brian relationship that it always gives me a little comfort coming into the film. It was just a couple weeks ago, Ben stubbed his toe, and I felt ah, so bad ah, for him. Ah, he was limping ah, everywhere. He stubbed his pinky ah, toe. I mean, man. You know, it hurts. We've really gotten into a rhythm, Ben and I, as much as I think it's still a challenge to understand one another. It's because we come from two completely different worlds, and I think that's a big part of the reason why it's worked. Ride or die. Ride or die. I'd have to give a lot of that credit to Vin as a producer. He's just done an incredible job of keeping up with the fans and keeping the heart. You can always have things blow up, but ultimately, you can't keep that going forever without heart. Can't turn your back on them. The overriding theme for this franchise has always been about family. When it really comes down to it, it is the people around you, and it is the place that you call home. And that's really where we're trying to get with these three films, and, and it all comes together in this one. There's times where it's really not a scene anymore. Vin coming up and, you know, I'm playing Uncle Dom. What's up, Uncle Dom? We, we do that in our real life. Yeah, he's also a true So it's funny, just as it's grown, we've grown with it. So to be in the Toretto house at the end, that's something that was very fulfilling our final day. Action. All right, y'all, so let's eat. Does any of this feel familiar? No. But it feels like home. I remember seeing the first Fast and Furious. I was just in film school. And that house, what that meant to those characters. Oh, wow. First bite, he's got grace. And now, 12 years later, to be able to earn our way back there, that really is the anchor for these characters. We can go around the world and do all these crazy stunts and scope and everything, but ultimately, it's to service the journey home. It's official. You're all free. I feel like Fast and Furious has been such a big part of my career and my life. To be able to find an organic way to close out this chapter, it was very emotional for me on many levels. I was standing, you know, by by the barn, I remember, and with, with the in the midst of all the crew and the cast, you know, I, I was just by myself in that moment, just kind of taking it in, and how my first time there was actually from the other side of the screen, and now standing there and saying, okay, this is it, and, you know, I've done everything that I've wanted to do, and to be able to walk away, having it be my decision, that to me felt complete, it felt right. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a picture wrap on Jordana and Tyrese and Sung and Chris and Michelle and last but not least, Vin Diesel. These characters, they're very far from where we first met them. My life started at the Toretto home. It was a very heavy day to be there, but it was a beautiful, beautiful way to end the trilogy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you got me, man. You go. We got seven and eight in the book. <laughs> well, all. You have to work tomorrow. <laughs> Fast six. This has been a real one, guys. Fast six, no one thought it was possible. I couldn't ask for a better way to end my watch of the franchise. Till next time. Till next time.
crew were after, they hit like thunder and disappear like smoke. You go in alone, you won't ever touch them. I need your help, Dom. I need your team. All right, Hobbs. You got the best crew in the world right here in front of you. There's something that happens when we make our way to the set the first day. It always feels like we were just here a week ago. You crazy son of a bitch! You know this. What up, man? There's a great camaraderie that exists in front and behind the camera that makes these films what they are. Lens finders. <laughs> so this is Fast and Furious. Yeah. Semi to rehearse. All right, here we go. Fly, please. Let's roll. Camera. She's a mom now. She knows she needs to protect her baby, but she knows what's running through those boys' veins. And you can't keep them at home for too long. And if it's something as important as bringing a family member back, I think it's essential. Even though seemingly everything's cool and they're living a good life there in Tenerife, he's always walking around with a dark cloud. You know, they first hear what's going on. Brian doesn't want to see it or realize it because he doesn't want to disrupt what he has, because for once he feels like he has stability and he has a home. Brian, remember the second you go through those doors, everything changes. And to go and disturb that is just, don't mess with my life. Action. Now that we have a lot of family members back, I wanted to play with the idea of trust. It wasn't that hard to find you, Toretto. And so when we first see Hobbs on Dom's patio, he has a mission that he feels nobody else in the world can do. But you get the sense in the beginning of the movie that something's not right. You must miss home. And I don't know if it's Dom's connection to Letty that makes him feel a little uneasy at the top of the movie. The fact that Hobbs has to go to Dom is not only the last resort, but it's the best resort. And what got me excited to bring Hobbs back this time was the element of Dom and Hobbs actually working together. This would be interesting. At the end of Fast Five, Hobbs says to Dom on that bridge, Toretto, I'll see you soon. So when he shows up at the beginning of Fast Six, the audience have to be prepared for anything. I like to think of that relationship as brothers who have had to fight one another to prove the worthiness of their brotherhood. Hobbs doesn't want to enforce the law. He wants to exercise justice. We're going to witness his arm explode <laughs> live on set. And Fast Six, I'm a part of the Mile High Fun Club. <laughs> but when that call came in, even in the middle of my partying, one sex face. You know, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I'm gonna show up and contribute in, in a way that only I can. Why do I smell baby oil? You keep running a pie hole, you're gonna smell an ass kicking. From back in Too Fast, Too Furious, I've established that I have a problem with authority. <laughs> and I'm almost the voice of the people, you know, because Dom has this voice that's so deep. It's almost like you can get caught up in what he's saying, like the strings just start playing. And then I come in like, look, man, you can have a deep voice all you want. I'm not having it. So now we work for the Hulk? Things changed. We're getting paid, right? We first end up with Tej in Costa Rica. He's around the Spanish women. He's still buying exotic and very expensive cars. Damn, that's serious business right there, man. And he's on the beach, he's having fun. Hello? But Tej understands that if Dom calls, he's always gonna make sure that he does what he needs to do. Thank God, finally some equipment I can work with. Of course, he's still the tech guy, but you know, I started to get a little bit of action. <laughs> Which is something I've been begging for for quite some time. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I've been working out hard the entire time we've been on set. You know, I would go to Vin's trailer to work out in his gym. You looking good, man. Thanks, looking thanks good. for your gym, my brother. Ah, ah, ah. 
Better make sure you get her a big rock, man, because she don't look like she'll be that easily impressed. And if it's not a big rock, it better be big somewhere else. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's why all your girlfriends wear so much bling, huh? Han is the guy that everybody wants to have a beer with. But when the older brother calls for help, Tom, we're on the first plane or the train to go join the family. Let's go. Giselle trusts Dom to make the call, and now is when he really needs them. So she'll do anything for him. In this one, she fights guys, she plays with a weapon. She's flying off of motorcycle, airplane. It's like Superwoman. <laughs> so this is worth billions, huh? Name your price, Don. This team, we are not driven by money. We live by a certain code, and you know, the, the money gives you access to certain things, but money never buys happiness. It never buys family. And that's why this theme of family continues through the franchise. The great thing is that, you know, our cast genuinely likes one another. We all get along. We have so much fun. We laugh each and every day with each other. I was talking to Vin today and I said, no, it's been like 10 years. And he's like, 14, I mean, it's been practically 14 years, which is so crazy. And it keeps getting more and more fun. <laughs> it's like a traveling circus. We've all been doing it for so long. When you run the course of 13 years, you, you grow with all of that. Everyone's got a little more pop a little more strut to their stuff, and it's cool seeing that. We love each other and get along, and I'm very proud of that energy that uh, has been created in this franchise. And the fact that everyone continues to come back, it's so damn cool. Okay. This behind the scenes shit is the movie right here. This is, these are the moments. This was taken a week ago. It's impossible. I found out that there was a tag ending post credits of Fast and Furious 5 with me in it. You need to look at that. And I was like, oh, that's interesting that my best friend Vin wouldn't call me and tell me. You believe in ghosts? Would have been nice for somebody to call, you know what I mean? <laughs> we never really confirmed that she was dead because we never showed you a body. Taken a week ago. Dom had to re-evaluate what's truth and what's not true. This is exactly what cops do. He's messing with your head. Your past is... Not necessarily your past. Definitely saw it was you. She looked that at me, bro. It's always an extremely hard decision to bring somebody back from the dead, and we thought really, really long and hard about would the audience go with it? Could we come up with a good enough story as to what really happened to her? Michelle really loves that character. She was very sad that, you know, Letty was killed off. It was a loss for me, because I love independent women. And she doesn't rely on any man. That's what I always loved about Letty. Figure it out. We always do. Even while we were doing Fast 4, there were people that knew Letty was not going to be gone forever. <sighs> Instead of shooting her in the head, I shot the car. And my assumption is, is that she's dead, but she made it out alive, so. This is how Letty lives to see another day. She's got nine lives, Letty. So you've met Mr. T? I'll knock you over. We'll kill you. <laughs> and bring you back to life again, two movies later. I know that this is something that Vin and a lot of his fans have been campaigning for for over four years. I'm here for you. So I felt loved. You want an adrenaline rush? It'll be too large. Right here, right now. What's it going to be? 
I kind of busted my butt to make the original Letty character have integrity, you know? And you fight for little things like not being your typical Latina girl or being true to the street credibility of something. And it actually pays off with fan nods, you know? Are you gonna give the rest of us the same speech when we go out? Can I take that one more time? Michelle takes a lot of pride in being Letty. I had many a nights talking to Michelle about how we could bring this to screen. Okay. This is the guy I shot. You look happy. I don't remember him. That's bullshit. The device of the amnesia was always in there to try to challenge Letty and, and in a way challenge Michelle to really not give in. You want me to cover it up from the top? I think so. Because I did give it a lot on the yeah. shock. Because if you saw that, then you would know. You, you become vulnerable. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. At first, you know, through the, the script work, it was tough because a lot of times you would lose the integrity of a character with the memories. That girl you remember, it's not me. So you kind of have to remind people, you can lose memory, but there's something innate in a person. He's gone. Thanks. That's it? There has to be a level of integrity that's very letty. What the hell is wrong with you? This isn't part of the plan. She understands what her level is. Like, I will not go that far to survive. Sure, you don't have to do this. That pretty much set the tone for Letty throughout the film. I may not remember anything, but I know one thing about myself. Nobody makes me do anything I don't want to. Yeah, that was so huh? I gotta say, I love Letty. I'm glad she's back, you know? Wrong team, bitch. Target's Owen Shaw, former Spec Ops soldier. I can reach out and break you whenever I want. I think what's going to separate Fast Six is the introduction of a couple of badass new characters. Ah! It's been fun running with you, mate. <laughs> if Ivor is dead, he made a mistake. You make a mistake, you pay the price. Cut. For me, one of the big reasons to come back and do Fast Six was to truly have an antagonist that's worthy of Dominic Toretto. These guys are common criminals. Tonight, these common criminals were seconds away from taking us down. I think we tend to really gravitate towards Dom and his philosophy. You have family and loyalty. So I wanted to create an antagonist that had the exact opposite philosophy. The team is nothing but pieces you switch out until you get the job done. There's never been an archetypal villain in this franchise, and that's really exciting. So, uh, it was a no-brainer for me. I think I'd rather come off than something you do. Oh, okay, okay. Like, um, so I can react to it. Luke does a lot of prep. He takes a lot of time to really kind of talk about why these characters exist, and it helps because he's able to instill that in every movement, every beat of his character. I think the simpler the better, because yeah. you guys are so, like, well-versed. It's on a daily basis, Justin and I speak about Shaw and what's going on in the back of his mind, which Justin is very, very good at reminding you as your character why you would do what you're doing and why you're there. And into their lives, into their minds, find their weaknesses, and we will exploit them. For Shaw, it's, it's really about taking the emotion out of the job. And the fact that, you know, I think in his mind, that's the ultimate move because it makes him a sharper kind of chess player. This has got Shaw's name written all over it. We've got vantage points, multiple exits, subways, highways, and storm drains. And when you keep that up, I'm gonna be out of a job. Hobbs has a new partner, oh, Riley. Wow. And the actress, Gina Carano, is everything that Riley is. She's beautiful, and she was a trailblazer for women's MMA. She's a badass. It's pretty exciting to be a part of Fast 6. I think I've gotten really lucky. You know, it's only my second film. And Justin has been really great and works with me wonderfully. You see how you see Letty? Yeah. Run through right there? Or are you going to go out? I think Gina Carano does such a great job, not only in her strong suit, which is a combat, <laughs> 
but the way that she delivers her performance is so cold that it plays to her character in such a brilliant way. What the hell happened? We met Dom's girlfriend. She's lovely. I think that Riley's personality is stoic and very quiet and strong. You know, there's power in being quiet and being in the background. Those individuals are the ones that you really have to watch out for. So the fact that Gina Carano, who is very shy, by the way, quiet, sweet, but when she says, you know, I could probably unhinge your jaw with one punch. <laughs> you gotta be careful. Riley's character changed a couple times during pre-production, so Justin called me and he said, look, uh, I think it would be better if Riley ends up being the mole. Coming, babe? Of course. At first I was like, oh man. But at the same time, as far as characters, I think it's much more fascinating to be the betrayer. <laughs> Gina, how many more times do we need to do this scene <laughs> where you're kissing a guy straight in his goddamn mouth? I need to know this. We need some baby wipes on set right now. We need cleanser. I look back through filming this and I'm just happy I was able to be a part of the family. Everybody was absolutely wonderful and very accepting, very warm. I loved every second of it.